Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Why are the Jewish people in Israel today? Is it random? Is it a coincidence? Or is it destiny? What's happening in Israel today is the culmination of Jewish history. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well. But we will go along the king's highway until we be past thy borders. For almost 4,000 years, the Jewish people have been living on faith. Faith in prophecies given thousands of years ago. Promises that seem irrational. Promises that seem almost impossible. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border, but Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jehaz and fought against Israel. Every single one of them is coming to pass in our lifetime. Every single one of them. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all the villages thereof. The first promise to Israel was made to Abraham, an eternal covenant. And I shall establish a covenant between me and you, and between your offspring after you throughout their generations, as an everlasting covenant. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because there were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. We, an eternal people, stand alive today. We also know that if the Jewish people don't live a godly life in the land of Israel, we're promised to be scattered to four corners of the earth. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. But adventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. The Torah tells us the atrocities and the curses that would come upon the Jewish people throughout the exile. No one has suffered as we have suffered. No one has been as persecuted. Crusades, the Inquisition, Muslim oppression, nation after nation, religion after religion. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And despite all the persecution, not only have we survived, but we've thrived. So they will be sent out of the land, and while they're away, the land will become desolate. Well, the land in the late 1800s was barren, full of rocks, we couldn't produce anything here. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. All the ancient pathways crossed through Israel. Every empire throughout the last 2,000 years tried to settle the land of Israel. Babylonia, the Persians, the Medes, the Greeks, the Romans, the Ottomans, the British, all of these empires with all of their wealth and all of their resources tried, and all of them failed. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Then we're told that when the Jews return to the land of Israel, the land will start to flourish again. It'll blossom. Just as the people have been revived, the land has been revived. The land of Israel responds to the people of Israel. The land didn't change, it returned to itself. The fruit had a vibrance of color like it hadn't in thousands of years. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, 
to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. The ingathering of the exiles, it's the most prophesied event in the Bible. It's mentioned over 40 times. Unprecedented in history, never before has a nation been scattered across the world and then ingathered to its ancient homeland. And yet every single prophet mentions this miraculous feat that will happen. Behold, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, the pregnant and the birthing together. A great congregation will return here. And now they have been returned to the land. And the land is still carrying the names of the great history of this people. It's unbelievable. Today in Israel, you see universalism. Jews from Ethiopia, Africa, Asia, North America, South America, Russia, the entire world has now returned to the land of Israel. Now after the most inspiring comeback story in world history, after building the most moral and innovative democracy in the entire Middle East, you'd think that Israel would be supported and held up as an example. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. This is the widely known video of the attack, shot by Jules Naudet.